Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be creating a card for the latest There's a Stamp for That Challenge group. I hope you'll stick around, see what the new challenge is, and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I've been stopping by every other Friday recently to create a card for my friend Danny's There's a Stamp for That Facebook Challenge group. You might recognize Danny's name just from me mentioning it all the time here or from the Sheetload of Cards team and our Four on Friday monthly collaboration. She runs a challenge group on Facebook and although it is called There's a Stamp for that, you actually don't have to use a stamp on your card and you can do any kind of creation. It doesn't necessarily have to be a paper craft. If you're interested in finding out more about the group, I will link that in the description box below. Every other week she puts out a new challenge and one of the great things is that she always gives a couple options because she's hoping that by giving you those options you'll have something already in your stash that you can get creative with. This latest challenge is back to school or a square card. I decided since we recently started back to school that that is the theme that I would use. That is actually how I met Danny. We both work together in a local elementary school. For my card today, I'm going to be doing a clean and simple card, and even though I have a lot of inks in front of me, which might make you think it's going to be difficult, it actually isn't. I'm actually going to be coloring my image with most of these inks. I want to tell you a little bit more about the products that I'm going to use, and then I'll start the process. Once I do go into the process, I'll start a voiceover, and if I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. For my stamps today, I will be using this paint brush stroke from Gina Marie Designs. I got out a vintage paper tray ink set. It is teacher themed and it has apples and lots of neat sayings. It is called Teacher's Apple, I believe. Unfortunately, it wouldn't be for sale anymore, but I'm sure if you don't already have something in your stash for teachers that you can find something similar online. And then lastly for stamps, I will be using this collaborative set from Hero Arts and Ink Blot Shop called Please Deliver To. And I will be using the little colored pencils here for my main image. I will be using a variety of inks as well. These first five are from Gina K Designs, different than Gina Marie Designs. I chose these four from the spring set and this gray from the neutrals. I will also be using Memento Desert Sand Ink as well as Versafine Onyx Black. I went ahead and pre-cut my cardstock. I have a white card base, a piece of white for my stamping, and a piece of gray that will be just a slight mat around that. Let's get crafty! Because I do need some exact placement on my colored pencil stamps, I did pull out my Misty. I'm going to be taping my white cardstock in place using a couple pieces of Scotch Blue removable tape. This tape will not tear the cardstock when I pull it up later. You'll notice that I put the cardstock at 6 inches on the ruler, and I did need to remember that for later when I go back and restamp this. Once I had that cardstock in place, I then lined up my colored pencil strip. I wanted it to hang off the edge a little bit, and I wanted the colored pencils to be as straight as I could stamp them. Once I had that in place, I picked up the stamp with the door of my Misty, and I got out that Memento Desert Sand ink. Now I just pressed lightly on this when stamping it because I just need a slight impression so I know where to stamp my paintbrush swatches. I will need to stamp the colored pencils again later so I am leaving that stamp in place and just setting my Misty off to the side. 
For the next bit of stamping, I pulled out my Sizzix Stamper Secret Weapon Pad. When you have clear stamps, that gives that extra cushion that you need on the bottom. I also have a scrap of paper there because each time I stamp this paintbrush swatch, it will fall off the edge of that cardstock. Once I have my stamp on the block, it's time to start coloring in those colored pencils. I start with the green, which is jelly bean green, and I stamp it just so it's about where the tip of the pencils end. This is a quick, easy way to color things. I've seen a lot of people do this recently with swatches or strokes like this, and I decided to give it a try. After I cleaned the green ink off of my stamp, I inked it up again with lovely lavender. This is just a nice soft purple, and I love the way it looks with these other inks. Once again, I cleaned off the stamp, and then I inked it up with the blue, which is called Ocean Mist. The fourth and final color I use is Innocent Pink, and again I clean off that stamp, I ink it up, and then I stamp my colored pencils. I repeat this same process until I have all of those colored pencils stamped straight across. You'll be able to see here in the close-up that once I've stamped all those colors, you can barely see that light tan that I stamped it with earlier. I just use that as a guide so I would know exactly how high each time to stamp the paint swatches on there. Now that all of my coloring was done, it was time to re-stamp the colored pencil image, but this time I use Moonlit Fog. It's just a nice gray, and I thought it went well with my gray cardstock mat. I pulled back in the Misty, and I still had that stamp in the same exact place I needed it. I inked it up with the gray, and then I stamped this one nice and solid. And here you can see now, you can see the coloring through the colored pencil image. Finally, for the stamping, I'm going to be doing the sentiment. The entire sentiment will say, when the love and skill of a teacher work together, expect a masterpiece. The first stamp has all of those words except teacher. So I am going to use my Misty again so I can get some good placement. And so the sentiment will stand out from that coloring in the background. I pulled in my VersaFine Onyx Black ink. I play with the stamp placement a little bit and I decide where I'm going to put the main part of the sentiment and then I ink it up and stamp it to my card. Now I would say if I had this to do over again, I probably would have raised it up on the card and had the last half of the sentiment, the work together, expect a masterpiece, I would have probably had that land right at the tip of those colored pencils, but live and learn. Once I have the main part of the sentiment down, I pulled out the teacher stamp from the set, got that in place, inked it up, and stamped that as well. Now that all of the pieces are ready, it's time to put the card together. The first thing I did was mat my stamped piece with the gray cardstock. Once those were together, I pulled in my big blue roll of foam tape. This is the three quarter inch wide roll, and I added some of this to the back of my gray mat. Because the card is pretty flat, I thought this would add some nice dimension. I pulled the release tape on that, and this just got placed centered on the front of the card. I decided that I need some sparkle to fill up the white space on the card front. So I pulled out some clear, they're almost holographic looking gems, and I placed five scattered across the card. I started in the top left corner and just scattered those down to the bottom right. And here is a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's card. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day.
Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.